draft, we thought we would cut out the Deadwood and Todd McShay, and this will go a lot smoother with just Mel Kuyper Jr. So, Mel, I'm trying to figure this out. Just last week, you told me about your mock draft 4.0. You said you do a 5.0 the morning of the draft. So what are we doing here tonight, pal? We call it, Steve, a grade A draft. Todd and I do this independent, where if we were the GM for each team, who would we take at that point based on needs and our ratings and what our gut is telling us about each player? I try to be realistic with it, though, Steve, and not make it where it's so crazy and out of whack to so keep it in line to a certain extent. But this is basically, if these picks were made, we would give those teams an A grade for that pick. Gotcha. All right, let's take a look at your top 10. So uh, this could be different than your mock drafts, your grade A draft. Here's your top 10. And, well, looking at this right now, Mel, you tell me, how does this differ from your 4.0 mock draft, for example? Not a lot, really, because those quarterbacks, it's tough to pass on those quarterbacks. The wild card, and I've been consistent all along, Going back to December with Josh Allen from Wyoming being the number one guy and the number one quarterback. I think you look at, at Baker Mayfield as the wild card. At Denver at five, I just felt like Case Keenum, that one year, let's bring in Mayfield. If Keenum's the guy, great. If he's not, then you have Mayfield in there. But if Mayfield doesn't go there, I would have probably dropped him, Steve, down to Miami at 11. That's without projecting any trades because those teams would have to pass on position players for a quarterback to be traded up for. And I don't think they'll allow somebody to trade up to their spot and lose that position player like a Tremaine Edmonds, a linebacker from Virginia Tech, or a Derwin James, safety from Florida State, to let somebody jump in there and take Baker Mayfield. So maybe he drops to 11 if Denver doesn't take him at 5. Mel, if Darnold is not there at 2, do the Giants still go quarterback there? To me... Big blue here. They're the most fascinating pick in that top five. That's the Harmon. Dave Gettleman's got a ton of options, Steve. And if you put yourself in the position of GM of the Giants, how do you feel about Eli Manning? Do you want the heir apparent? Do you want to help Eli Manning with Saquon Barkley, the great running back from Penn State? Do you want to help your defense and get a pass rusher like Bradley Chubb from NC State? Uh, what direction do you want to go? And that also hinges on what quarterback you like the most. I'm Josh Allen. So if Josh Allen's there, I also like Sam Darnold. I like Allen a little bit better, but I like Sam Darnold. So either one of those quarterbacks for the Giants, I think, would be really solid to be the heir apparent to Eli Manning, knowing that we don't plan on picking second in the years to come. We want to be in the 20s right. or 32, possibly, hopefully. Uh, so picking second gives us a chance without giving up anything. You see what the Jets had to give to move up from six to three, two seconds this year and a second next year. That's three starters. So if I'm the Giants, I'm thinking about all that, Steve. I'm saying, hey, if we love uh, Darnold at two, Let's take them. Right. The Patriots are fascinating. They've acquired uh, so many of those high draft picks, two ones, two twos. Do they sneak in and get a quarterback, or where do you think they wind up with looking for their next signal caller? The interesting speculation is if Mayfield does drop down to that 10-11 spot, or say 10 because Miami's at 11, they probably would take him, but maybe New England jumps up. But it would they have to package all those picks, Stephen. We've talked about New England. They need to fill holes. Offensive tackle. You think about linebacker, cornerback. Yeah, they have four picks now, two in the first, two in the second. They can address those needs. And I think along the lines of Jimmy Garoppolo, Division one AA quarterback to the New England in the second round. Who's like Jimmy Garoppolo in this draft? It's Kyle Lawletta from Richmond, who showed he could play with the big boys at the senior bowl practice in the game. Had a heck of a career at Richmond with the Spiders. McShay's old school, by the way. And I think New England what would be a good fit there to bring in a guy like Garoppolo in the second round where they have two picks in that particular round. Hey, we don't have time to get into Shaquem Griffin's story, but for my money, he's the best story of the NFL draft. I hope, she go, I hope he goes in the first round. People talking maybe second. What's his story for you? I put him in a third. I'm playing GM for each team. I get into the late third and a compensatory pick for the Arizona Cardinals or anybody, Steve, at that point. You're getting a versatile football player, not say football player, who's going to be inspirational to your entire team. He's going to uplift everybody. If you feel like you're bringing your B game today, no, you're going to bring your A game because Shaquem Griffin's going to bring it every down, every play, every practice, every time you see him. He's going to be fired up, ready to play great football. So I want Shaquem Griffin on my team. I think in the third round, uh, he would be a great pick for anybody. Do you do a grade B draft? <laughs> this may end up in some cases turn out to be a B or a C draft for some of these teams. Steve, hey, we're not right all the time, and who knows? It might be a D draft for some, but all these guys aren't going to pan out. But no, no, we try to shoot for the stars here, Steve. You're the best, Mel Kuyper Jr.